Okay, so let's go over the materials we're gonna need for the lab. You're gonna need, first of all, the material sheet because it's gonna list everything you need. Then you're gonna need a tray because there's a lot of materials for this lab. Okay, so last time we did DNA extraction with wheat germ. Today we're gonna use strawberries. At the beginning of the year teaching science, I kind of just threw my students into group work, thinking that collaboration and teamwork was some kind of innate skill that they have, but that definitely wasn't the case. They were really lacking those communication and social skills and teamwork skills. Gently pour cold isopropyl alcohol so that it runs down the inner wall of the test tube. We need to go get them. It takes a lot to teach collaboration. We initially started with defining it, giving it relevance, talking about why it was important for them. We did a team building activity using yarn where we made a giant web and put a student in the middle of it and we picked up that student with the yarn to kind of illustrate to them that all of them working together can accomplish something that they didn't think was possible. And mm -hmm. Selena, you were the materials person, right? Yeah. Selena, Kathy, what do you want to be? I'll be the reader. We came up with group roles and we defined them. I put mine up on signs on the wall and they have to write their name next to their job on the lab sheets. Having those clear-cut group roles is a really important initial step. And in addition, we talked about what everybody had to do. Like no matter what your job is, you have to listen to each other, you have to contribute to the work, you have to contribute to the discussion, you have to support each other, and they need to be able to make sure they're learning the content. Detergent. That's what we're gonna get um, after, after yeah. ice. We're gonna have to deal with collaborating with others our whole life, because we're not just gonna get to pick who we work with. And it's important because it, it, it doesn't just depend on you, it depends on the, the people who you're working with too. Now let's start with the positives. What were, how did we do? Remember, how do we do with our jobs and this part right here where everyone was listening, contributing, supporting, and learning. How do we do, Angelique? A lot of people were working together. Okay, so good working together. Another key component that we talked about was how to reflect on how we're doing on collaboration and we kind of do a plus minus chart and after the end of a lab or an activity I have them write down some positives about how they are doing or their group or other groups and all, as well as some negatives, some things, some issues with collaboration that we as a class still need to work on. Twirl, it's a swallow hook and alcohol to collect the white strain. What do you mean? Oh look, I got it. I think a lot of people get collaboration and cooperation kind of confused and think they're the same thing because they're so similar. But cooperation is more like just teamwork where each student has a job and they do that job, end of story. But that's kind of like the beginning of the lab where they're all getting materials, they're all doing certain jobs. But the, the actual true collaboration part comes in is when they're discussing the questions, they're putting their heads together, they're putting their knowledge and their skills together. They're talking to each other, listening to each other to formulate it. And what I like to tell them is the ultimate goal is whatever they turn into me has to be better than what any individual could do. And that's what what's makes it true collaboration by them pulling their knowledge and turning in something that is better than an individual could do. Mm -hmm.